St. Mark Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Kirk Griffin, and I'm so glad we can be together today, spiritually connected while physically apart. We can still worship together in glory in God's name and give thanks to Jesus for his love and his grace. We're using an abbreviated service that we use basically on Saturday nights, and I'll be using that as our basis of worship. And so we begin in our Lenten time with our litany. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. In mercy, hear us. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from an unprepared and evil death. Good Lord, deliver us. By your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and suffering, by your death and burial, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulations, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, save us, good Lord. Though unworthy, we implore you to hear us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Let us make confession. Beloved in the Lord, we confess our sins to God, our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God, we poor sinners confess that by nature we are undeserving of your love and fallen short of your glory. We have sinned against you and each other by thought, word, and deed. We implore you to hear us, Lord. Forgive us, grant us mercy so that we may walk in your ways and come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is merciful and gracious, granting forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sin as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, so that we may become instruments of your redeeming love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel reading for this fourth weekend of Lent is taken from St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to them, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went, and he washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some are saying it is he. 
Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and I washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man's not from God. He does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about this? What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said, this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that no one, anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah, would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see. And those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now you say we see, so your sin remains. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the ears of our hearts be open to the word of God this day. Amen. At the beginning of this long gospel reading for this weekend of Lent, we hear a simple question, a question that many of us have asked before. Why? The disciples see a blind man and they want to know why is he been born blind? Why must he suffer? What did he do? Is it something he did? Or is it something his parents did? Surely he must deserve it. Why is he suffering? Why is this happening? We all ask those questions at times, and especially in this time, in this day and age, and what we're facing. People are suffering. People are worried. People are fearful. And we ask our questions, why? Why is this happening? We try to find reasons. We try to explain it. We try to blame somebody. Why? Jesus tells the disciples, it is not this man that sinned or his parents that sinned, but it is to show you the glory of God. That in this moment, in this time of need, in this time of worry, God is with us. Jesus says to his disciples, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is with us. Jesus is our light. In all worries, all distress, we look to Jesus. We look to God for hope, for peace, for assurance, for that promise of his love. The people didn't understand this in Jesus' day. Because as soon as he healed the blind man, they questioned it. Who could have done this? How did this happen? Why is this happening? It happened right before them. And they refused to see it. They refused to see God in their midst. They would rather see the darkness, the despair, the sin, the brokenness. They question the man, his own neighbors, who have seen him their entire life, and know that this is a miracle. Question him and examine him. And he points out that it was Jesus. Do you not see? Jesus made mud, told me to go wash, and now I see. But they refused to see it. They refuse to listen. So they bring their leaders, the Pharisees and leaders of the community to come and they question the man. Who did this? Why is this happening? How did this happen? And he says again, Jesus made mud. He put it on my eyes. He said to go wash. And I did. And now I'm clean and I can see. And they refuse to understand. They refuse to listen. They refused to see that Jesus was in their midst, that God had performed miracles. They even questioned his parents. They questioned him, them. How could this happen? Why is this happening? Who did this? And again, the man has to defend himself. He says once again, Jesus made mud, put it on my eyes, and healed me. And now I see. How do you not see? How do you not understand? And the question still persists to us today. Sometimes we'd rather look at the darkness, be overcome by the fear and despair. We don't open our eyes to see the glory of God that's in our midst, the love of God that comes to us and surrounds us when Jesus walks beside us in the times of our darkness to give us light, to give us hope. In this day, we need to see that same light, to know that God is coming, that he is with us, that he walks beside us. May we open our eyes and see that glory. May we see Jesus. May we see the love of God that is with you. No matter what you face this day, God is with you. May you see, may you listen, may you know. Amen. And may the peace and grace of God be with you today and throughout this week to come. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Turning our hearts now to God who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord God, open the eyes of your people so that we may see the hope that is in you. You come to us in our need and provide healing and strength. Send that healing now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, spread your spirit across the world to grant leaders and caregivers wisdom and guidance. Grant the ability for people to come together and to help and support each other when facing these times of unknown worry and fear. We know that you're always in control and we seek that peace now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring Lord, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek you in prayer, especially the sick, the lost, the abandoned, the homebound and the hospitalized. Grant skills and knowledge and courage to the workers that are the caregivers, the doctors, the nurses and administrators. Grant your healing to all those we name now in our prayers to you. Surround them in your loving arms and bear them up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, in you is the light eternal. Even in the darkest moments of worry, fear, and dread, we come to you and see the everlasting hope. Grant that peace to all those who have lost loved ones in death and mourn. Be with all those who grieve this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Of coordinate your steadfast love, O Lord, Hear these in all our prayers as we lift them into your care, praying the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you and grant you hope. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, may we live in love, faithful to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>